Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Data Science Foundations. Today is where we, again, talk about the most foundational trade-off in all of machine learning. Um, I hope this will be fun. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so this is another way to look at the um, approximation generalization trade-off, basically. So one might say that this class is redundant, but I would not say so. Uh, the bias variance trade-off um, is the way that most people talk about this in machine learning, and I think a lot of people don't uh, don't explain this in the appropriate way. Um, I, I think most of the time when you when you hear about bias variance trade-off, you'll see little uh, targets, and you'll see uh, some targets have a lot of um, uh, and 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 there's lots of shots or arrows on this target. And uh, some of the targets, the arrows are really concentrated together. Those are low variance. And some of the arrows are very high, far away from the center of the target. And those are high bias. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like that description. I, I believe it is somewhat confusing. Um, but I think having learned the approximation generalization trade-off, it, it will be sort of easy for you to see where the bias variance trade-off fits in. Um, so if you've not seen the approximation generalization trade-off video, Check it out, it's the previous video uh, in this series. I'll also just link it up above. So do, do just check that out. Uh, otherwise, if you just wanna see the bias variance trade off, let's do this. Okay, so uh, let's start off, let's get some data. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get data and then we need to get a hypothesis sense. The bias variance trade off is something that happens across three dimensions. Uh, so it happens across, well, two dimensions, kind of. So it happens across the data dimension. The more data you get, the bias variance trade-off changes. Um, and it also happens across the complexity of hypotheses or hypothesis sets. Um, and so uh, across these two dimensions, it's going to change, and we'll, we'll explore what happens across these two dimensions. But for that, we'll need data. <clears throat> In this case, I get data where the x value is a random number between negative 1 and 1, and the y value is the sine of x. Pretty simple. I'm going to be using two hypotheses sets, so two sets of hypotheses. One is a single um, uh, one. One is a single infinite parameter uh, linear regression. So this will just predict the average. So for every x value, it just predicts a single y value. And this one will draw a line through our data. So this is this is a two value sort of linear or two infinite parameter linear regression. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And we're going to be looking at two quantities this time. They'll be different from the approximation generalization quantities. In this case, we have bias and we have variance. Um, the nice thing is that bias is kind of easy to explain uh, and perhaps understand, but, it, but it's a little bit confusing, so bear with me. The bias is the error of the best hypothesis in your hypothesis set. And now you're like, well, Nate, didn't we train in order to find the best error in our hypothesis set? Not exactly. This is the best error in your hypothesis set on the real world data. Okay? And you don't have the real world data. If you had infinite data, then yes, you could presumably, with specific types of machine learning algorithms, find the true bias of your model. But you generally don't have that. Variance, on the other hand, is, all, is defined in terms of bias. A variance is the average error between a hypothesis generated on test data points and the uh, I'm sorry, is the, is the average error of a hypothesis, like a generated hypothesis on test data points and the best hypothesis. So it's, it's on test data points, okay? And so, so if the bias is the average error of the best hypothesis in your data set and you add on the average error of a normal hypothesis uh, in, in your data set, the difference between normal hypothesis and the best uh, hypothesis, what you get is the training error or the test error. Excuse me, so let me just say that one more time to be specific. The bias is the error of the best hypothesis in your hypothesis set. It's the test error. Uh, the variance is the difference between that bias and what an actual, what, some, what a normal on average hypothesis will generate on the test set. So if you add the best plus on average the difference between the best and the truth, then you go ahead and you get the truth, the test error. Um, and that's the idea with bias and variance. It's very similar to approximation plus generalization. The bias plus the variance equals the test error. And the approximation error plus the generalization error also equals the test error. Um, so let's go ahead and explore what the bias plus the variance looks like in this case. Um, first, the bias. 
So for our simple example, it's, well, it's pretty simple. I'll go ahead and I'll show you what the bias and variance are. The bias for the first hypothesis is 0.5, and the bias for the second hypothesis set is 1.9. Um, I can go ahead and show you. This is what the linear regression will look like for the best hypothesis in our hypothesis set of our simple hypothesis. It just goes straight through zero. And so obviously the error will be 0.5 on average. Um, the best hypothesis in our other set, it, it kind of just makes a straight line that kind of just goes sort of right through the sine curve. You know, obviously it looks better than this one, the one up here. Um, so those are our bias. So notice the bias, uh, the biases don't depend on the data right, or on the number of data points in your training sample. You can have zero or you can have a million. The, the bias of your model will always be the same, which is nice. Uh, the only way that the bias can change is by increasing or decreasing the complexity of the model or by changing the data set in general. And we'll, let's not even consider that. So the only way the bias of your model can change is by changing the complexity of the model. Variance, on the other hand, is very different. Variance varies over both the complexity of the model and the number of data points. So let's check it out. Again, I'm going to be using uh, a size of two in this case, and let's look at the variance of our two models. The variance of our simple model is 0.25, and the uh, variance of our more complex model is 1.75. Now I want you to remember something here, um, and I think I wrote this right down below. The bias plus variance equals the test error. If you remember from our previous example with approximation plus generalization, we got the same thing. We got a test error of around 0.75 and we got a test error of around 2. Uh, we just decomposed it in different ways. Uh, so instead we, we de decomposed it in terms of approximation and generalization. In this case we decompose it on bias variance. So the bias, 0.5 plus the variance, so bias, you know, the best model, plus on average how much worse do you do than the best model is how normally you do. <laughs> The, it's, it's, it's kind of, I, well, anyways, it's just, it's funny how this is sort of defined. The bias, the, you know, the error on your best model, plus on average, the difference between the error on your best model and, and sort of a normal model that you train gives you the normal error of, or, or the error of a normal model you train, right? It's just sort of definitionally true. Um, so you'll notice that at least on two data points, we can go ahead and we can see very similar results than we did last time. The uh, simpler model does better. That being said, as we increase the number of data points, this changes. So let's let's explore this. Um, you, you might sort of already get the feeling here, so I'll just sort of leave you with this on the last end. As the model increases in complexity, the bias drops. As the model increases in complexity, the variance increases. It's a trade-off. Um, we'll be exploring this a little bit later on, but you know, obviously it goes back, it ties back into this sort of initial idea that the likelihood that a model will misrepresent itself on, on the training data will, so which is the variance, right, depends on the complexity of the model because the more models you try, the higher likelihood that one of those models will misrepresent itself and you'll, and you'll catch it. You'll say that this guy is the best one. Um, the bias always decreases as you increase the model complexity, again, for, from the same argument. Um, if you have a hammer and you have a toolbox and you are, you are trying to solve a problem, by increasing the number of tools in your toolbox, you're always the best way to solve that problem is only going to get better, right? Um, so it, it's sort of similar to, to what we did previously. Let's let's just view some visualizations uh, just so we can get this not only intuitively grounded but empirically grounded. Okay. First visualization, starting with the simple hypothesis. Okay, so here we go. Here's our simple hypothesis and here's our complex hypothesis and the variance of both. Remember, the bias never changes, so it's only the variance that changes. So as we increase the number of data points, the variance of both of these models goes to zero. Great, okay, that's awesome. Notice that the variance initially is quite different. Initially, the variance between our big model and our small model, between our large hypothesis set and our small hypothesis set is immense. And our large hypothesis set has no way of doing better than our smaller hypothesis set. But as we increase it, it will do better. So if I go ahead and I add the bias to both of these, what we see is we have a crossover point. The larger model will do better when we have around five data points. So this is actually seven. Uh, it's, it's just the axes are a little bit skewed. So when the model has around seven data points, it will actually do better than the smaller model. So 
bias variance trade-off. At some point, when you have enough data, you can make this trade to accept a little bit more variance to go ahead and decrease your bias. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the final thing, which is how the bias changes um, as we increase the model complexity. So putting it all together, as we increase the model complexity, so here we start off with you know, a sort of zeroth order uh, linear regression or one you know, infinite parameter, two infinite parameters, three infinite parameters, four, five, we always decrease the bias. The bias always decreases. Um, not by much each time, but it always decreases. And as we increase the model complexity, we also get the second thing that happens. So here um, is the variance. So as we increase the model complexity, we increase the variance. So notice we increase the model complexity, it gets a little bit darker. But as we increase the number of data points, the variance drops. So the bias variance trade-off. If we go ahead and we sort of plot this heat map, you'll, you'll notice there are sweet spots, just as we talked about before. Um, you want to go ahead and choose based on the number of data points in your sample and how noisy, and we'll talk about this right after, your data is a correct hypothesis set. Now this, this is crucial. Um, we'll talk about this later when we're actually doing the noise stuff. But notice, only when we have enough data points. So initially, it's the one hypothesis or the one um, infinite parameter situation does better, right? But then as we get more and more data points, we go ahead and the three one looks better. And as we get more and more and more data points, it looks like the four infinite parameter one does better. Um, so it's always a trade-off. Now, how do you figure out which mo what model complexity do you use? Well, well that is, is a situation for next time. So in conclusion, the trade-off is this. As you increase the model complexity, you decrease the bias, but you increase the variance. Now that increase in bias might be, oh, that de increase in variance might completely outweigh that de decrease in bias, in which case you should not increase the model complexity, or it might be vice versa, in which case you should. Determining when to do this is sort of uh, one of the tricks that you will learn as a data scientist, and we'll be covering that next. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them below in the comment section. I, I love them. Um, and as always, I have some questions for you. Um, if you're new to this, go ahead, check out these comprehension questions down here, write your answers for them, and then check in the, uh, the comments below and see if someone else has answered them. If no one has answered them, go ahead and post your answers. If someone has answered similar to, similarly to you, go ahead and just give them a thumbs up, you know, like, hey, I did that one too. And if you wanna answer something slightly different from other people, go ahead and just sort of answer it down below and I'll go ahead and check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I, I hope you enjoy the bias variance trade-off. Let me know if you like the approximation generalization trade-off more or the bias variance trade-off more. Um, as always, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.